Hey, this is Joey with Grandel Wrestling. Come check out our event in St. Louis, Missouri this week. STL vs. The World on April 30th. And don't forget to check out the podcast, Drinking at Moe's. All right, everybody. Oh, oh, oh. There, I think that was my issue before. All right, everybody. Welcome to Drinking at Moe's. If you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, turn on the notifications because May is going to be one hell of a month on Spotify, Google Podcasts. Leave, leave me a rating. helps out the show. Today, we got one of the guys behind the Grandel Wrestling. Again, we're going to be talking about their big show they got this weekend. They got some hell of a bunch of talents coming. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm, I'm doing pretty great myself. Things really picking up for my show here. I actually tomorrow, unless something happens, I got Beer City Bruiser. Oh, there you go. We're pretty excited about that. And Absolutely. I had, had Terry Silken on not all that long ago. Okay. Wow. Getting all the Ring of Honors. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. I'm, and, you know, hoping maybe a few more. I know uh, I had the SATs on. They... Uh, early Ring of Honor. They've been facing off with the Briscoes. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. As a, so, looking forward to, you know, maybe getting a few more Ring of Honor guys on. But uh, anyways, I'd like to start before we get into talking more about the, sh- the show you got coming up. Um, i like to ask everybody what got you started as a f- fan of wrestling so i would say that like as far as being a fan like i've been a fan since i was a kid probably like man my dad you know it's funny my dad had these old tapes from like 1987 i think and he kind of stopped watching wrestling and this was around like 92 93 i found these old tapes of uh like nwa wcw okay like luger and sting and flair and i watched that tape probably a hundred times and then I would go to the video store. You know, remember the video stores in the supermarkets? Oh yeah. They always yeah, had I... the best. They always had the best wrestling tapes. So oh, I would just cool. go there, and I would rent wrestling tapes, and then watch. You know, I watched like WCW Saturday Night, um, and I'd watch Raw when I could. But I think the thing that really got me, the first thing that I saw that was like, whoa, was um, when One Two Three Kid beat Razor Ramon. I was watching that night. Yeah, that was like the that was the night where I was like, oh man, I'm hooked, I'm in. And then you know from there, just you know being a part, being a kid, and like during the Monday Night Wars and like seeing that, um, it was just great. So that that's kind of what made me a fan of wrestling, I would say. Oh yeah, I know for for me, uh, whew, this might be dating myself. I turned 39 in July, but. I know for 39 me, you, man, I hear you. <laughs> but uh, what really got me early on was guys like you know, typical, you know, Hogan, Warrior, but especially two of my absolute favorites and why I'm such a fan of tag team wrestling, the Road Warriors. Yeah. With, their, with those spiked shoulder pads and the way, just the way the crowds reacted to those guys, I'm like, man, this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah, I mean, I think every kid wanted those, like, toy shoulder pads that they sold. Yes. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, For I sure. never ended up getting them, but, you know, I always wanted them. Um, so we got this big show this weekend. What got you into... Uh, starting the promotion oh okay well that's a that's it's a it's a long story but i'll try and give you the short version yeah that's so i've been i've been a concert promoter for i guess since about 2003 and around 2016 7 16 i was just burnt out i wanted to do something else i wanted to to do something different 
and I had a lot of passion for wrestling. And a, a buddy of mine knew someone at WWE, and I was like, he was like, go meet with this guy, see if he likes you, and you will get a job. So I went and met with him. I flew out, met with him, and I came back and I started running their VIP program for about six months to a year. It was about it was a little over a year probably. Um, and you know, I just kind of I got in with the talent and worked with a lot of really good people there. And, um, it kind of gave me the confidence to say, you know what, like I can do something in wrestling now. Like I feel like I, I I've met people, I know people, like I can actually do something. So I came back to St. Louis and there was this promotion called Glory Pro Wrestling. And they were doing they were doing a lot of cool stuff with a lot of great talent, bringing in a lot of cool people. Um, you know, Ethan Page was somebody they brought in quite often, you know, the Lucha Brothers and just so many oh. different cool people. Um, Cody Rhodes, uh, mm. uh, who's, the, who's the guy from New Japan they brought in? I can't think of it. Naka, uh, not Nakamura, but um, I can't think of his name. He's Intercontinental Champion forever. I can't think of his name. But oh anyway, God. Ishii is one of my favorites. There, it's so. not Ishii. It's it's the really flamboyant guy. Tanahashi? No, he's like he's in that group. He's really he's kind of a flamboyant dude. Okada? No, still next. You keep going. You're gonna get it. Ah, it's driving me nuts. Naito. 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 Yes. There we go. It was Naito. So, you know, they were bringing in people like that, and I would just go to their shows. And another thing that really, like, captivated me was the fact that, like, our local talent was just exceptional in St. Louis. Like, I was like, man, this is, mm. we could really do something. And I went to them about three years ago, and I said, let me help you produce an event. Like, let me help you produce an event. Not just, like, a venue where it's, like, a ring, and it, like, I want to bring production in I want to do this right I want to have something that we could do annually and kind of hang our hat on well you know COVID happened and things happen and it is what it is but here we are and I, I feel like you know I've lost two partners and we've kind of went through the thing and I've created a promotion out of it but um, yeah I'm really excited for the show yeah that's from what I've seen of it I mean just from that poster alone I mean you got you got Moose, you got Alex Shelley, you got Josh Alexander fresh off that yeah. great, great win this last weekend. You, Samurai Del Sol, did, I could go on. You got, <laughs> you got um, I'll go on for you. Daniil Dashwood. Um, hmm. uh, who else is on that thing? I think he pretty much covered it, actually. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a great card, and I'm really excited for... Um, just our local talent to get some of these great opponents. Oh yeah, no, that definitely. I always like to say, you know, when uh, you get some of the big names like that, it'll only make your local talents that are facing them better because they're they're having to step their game up. Oh, absolutely, bit. yeah. And you know, the, the another thing too is. You know, we have a beautiful venue. It's like a 600 seat theater. It's incredible. They use it for like a lot of um, plays and stuff like that. They do some music there, but um, it's just a really great place. Um, and we're bringing in like a ton of production. We're doing big video walls. Everyone mm -hmm. will have customized entrances. Um, we're gonna have like a theme to the whole event. It's kind of like a Gatsby theme. We'll have like right. just all kinds of different things. Like it's more it's more of an event than it is just a mm -hmm. wrestling show. And that's kind of what I want to do every year is kind of have it be, you know, maybe a little different every year where it's kind of a, a different kind of event every single year. Okay, that, that seems pretty cool. Um, What are, well, let's kind of run down a little bit of the card. I've seen yeah. some of it. I'll, I'll have you, because you probably have a... Oh, it's all it's all here, man. All, I live, all, I live, all there. I live you, and breathe this event, them. so you, it's all there. So um, I will we'll start off with the first match. So um, Camaro Jackson, who is one of the rising stars. I mean, he's he's Davy Richards' favorite wrestler. Um, okay. And he's, he's one of the on trainers the at Davy Richards School. What's that? He's on the card too, right? Yeah, yeah. Davey he Richards? is. Um, he lives here in St. Louis. Uh, so Camaro is just unbelievable, great talent, and uh, he'll be facing Josh Alexander, which we all know what Josh does. Josh is the oh. Impact Champion now. 
you know? Um, and Josh was actually originally on my show three years ago, so he's the only one that kind of bled over. Um, okay. But I'm really happy to have him. He's a, he's a great guy, and I know this match is going to be a great, you know, just a great match and, and good for both guys. And people will, are going get, to gonna get to see how good Camaro is. So mm -hmm. I'm really pumped about that. Um, the second match is going to be Dan the Dad. I don't know if you know who Dan the Dad is. I've, I've heard of him. I've seen okay. him. Oh. He's got a he's got a fun gimmick. He's a, he's a he's a great wrestler with a great gimmick, and he'll be facing Silas Young. I know you know who Silas Young is. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and I've been a fan of I've been a fan of Silas for a long time, long time. Um, Dan Dan the Dad actually runs Warrior Pro Wrestling, and then he wrestles a lot in like AAW and uh, a lot of bigger oh, okay. promotions in the Midwest. He does a lot of stuff in um, Revolver stuff like that but that's gonna be a great match I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun um, and the third match is a three-way dance we're doing an old-school ECW three-way oh, dance the the elimination style the elimination style because I don't like the whole like first pin thing I I, I wanted to do something cool mm -hmm. and we're gonna oh, have yeah. I'm um, blame myself yeah we're gonna have a, a, an old veteran Jake Durden um, okay. he's I, there. I, you remember Jake I, yep yep versus um, Davey Vega who is like, you know, he's kind of been everywhere. He does a lot of AAW. He was, he's in a tag team called the Besties. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, they just changed their name to Grindhouse, but they're, he's a phenomenal worker. And then a guy who's been doing like a lot of New Japan Pro and stuff like that. But I, I think this guy is pound for pound one of the best wrestlers in the country. I, I just think it's a matter of time before somebody gets him and, and takes him to a different level. And uh, that's Fred Yehai. Um, Ooh, yes, I, I I remember hearing a bunch about him and seeing a bunch of his stuff on YouTube and all that. Oh man, Fred's Fred's on a different level, and I'm so excited to have him be a part of this event. You know, he's he's as good of a guy as he's a wrestler, um, and he's a great wrestler. So I'm pumped about that. And the fourth match um, we're gonna do is Alex Shelley versus Mike Outlaw. Um, okay. Obviously, we know Alex Shelley's resume. He's been he's yeah. basically done everything. Um, Mike is um, Mike is basically champion of every promotion, or he's been champion of every promotion here in St. Louis or near the Midwest. Um, he travels a lot. He's, he's a ring veteran. He just wrestled Davey Richards the other night. Had a great match. Um, that's going to be just that might steal the show. There's a lot of matches that might steal the show. I might say that more than once. Yeah, yeah. no, that is true. You guys, from what I've read, got quite the lineup. Yeah, um, I'm I'm really proud of how it turned out, and you know a lot of it. I like to say like, oh, I had this plan the whole time, but no, a lot of it was just kind of like fell into my lap. You know, some of it did at least. Um, and then the 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 match right before intermission is going to be a ladder match. It's going to be two of the craziest guys that I've ever witnessed, Gary J and Aaron Williams, who were you know they're pretty prevalent on the Indies. They travel a lot. They do a lot of stuff. Um, Gary actually um, has a, has a promotion with Matt Jackson in uh, St. Louis. It's, they do the shows over in Alton, but it's called Anarchy, and it's a really great promotion. Um, that's going to be for their title. Uh, it's going to be great. It's not going to be some you know six eight foot ladder match. It's going to be ten foot ladders. It's going to mm -hmm. be tables, chairs, the whole ball. And I'll tell you something. These guys are nuts. They're nuts. They're. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a little afraid because I like both these guys and I don't want to see them get hurt. But, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Um, you never know those types of matches. You never know. And I just, you know, I've seen these guys wrestle a million times. So hopefully they stand up at the end of the time. They at the end of the match, they shake hands and everything's all good. Um, coming out of our mission, we're, we're doing a guy, really good friend of mine, guy who's been instrumental in the local scene, uh, KLD. Uh, KLD has kind of been around the block a few times. He's been in a lot of places. Um, he'll be taking on Moose, and uh, nope. him and Moose had a match about two, three years ago, and uh, they're good buddies. And I don't want to give it away, but um, they like they like each other, and uh, they're excited to wrestle each other. So I'm sure that's going to be a heck of a match. Just two big guys kind of slapping each other around, kind of thing. Big old hoss fight. It'll be a hoss fight. Yeah, absolutely. With some with some agility, because for two big men, they both have crazy agility. Oh, yeah. Um, Big guys, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then 2D Lynn is the next match. 2D Lynn versus Daniel Dashwood. 2D obviously has been on uh, NWA TV a lot. 
Um, she does a lot of stuff, and, and obviously she's a big deal here in St. Louis because she's from here. But she's yeah. doing like, like I said, like a lot of NWA um, and a lot of the bigger indies in, in, in the Midwest. Um, yeah. And then Tennille, we know Tennille's resume. We know where she's what she's done, where she's been. Mm-hmm. She's a superstar. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, let's see, what's next? What's next here? Now I'm starting to forget it. Um, there is a there is a tag team here in St. Louis. Two young guys, I think 21 and 23. Um, they're called Technical Difficulties. Moses and Raheem De La Suede. And these guys, just they ooze charisma. They have technical wrestling backgrounds. They can do the high-flying stuff. They're just a great team. They go out there and they just, every match they have is just so good. It, it kind of gives you the best of both worlds, the technical and the, uh, you know, the high-flying stuff. And then they're gonna be mm-hmm. taking on West Coast Wrecking Crew out of New Japan Pro. And that's mm-hmm. Royce Isaacs and um, Jarrell Nelson. And those guys are just, you're going to hear about, I think you're going to hear about those guys on like a big level in, in probably a year or two. Like they're, they're going to burst through, whether it be with New Japan or with AEW or with WWE, like those guys are going to be on, on a big, on a big, in a big company. Um, and the main event is Davey Richards. We all know Davey Richards. Um, yeah. Davey is just a great guy. You know, I'm proud to call him a friend and uh, he'll be facing Samurai Del Sol, formerly Kalisto, uh, mm. who I'll tell you, the great thing, I, I pulled some favors for this because uh, Sam Marie Del Sol doesn't do indies at all, really. He's just kind of like doing his own thing. And I think he's waiting for kind of a, a, a bigger company to come grab him, which is you know pretty eminent. Because the guy is just in ridiculous shape. I know he had some health issues with COVID, but he's back to 100% just ready to go. And this is his first match in quite a while. And I, I, I've seen the shape he's in. I've seen him what he, what he looks like. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, he looks... Like he ate that, he looks like he ate Kalisto. And not like he's a fat boy, like he is just, <laughs> he is jacked, yeah. ripped, ready to go. Um, super excited for that match. These guys came up together. They trained together in California and they, you know, they're gonna go out there and they're gonna they're gonna turn the house down for about 20 minutes. Oh yeah, no, I'm fully confident in that one. I, I mean, uh, Richards, his, his resume speaks for itself and Samurai del Sol, Kalisto, I mean, good lord, I remember watching him in his time in WWE and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, he could go. And man, if they would have just given him that little more You know, it's funny because there's you know, I don't I don't know if you remember this back in the day, but there was this thing they tried with Cody Rhodes and they didn't do it. It was like a it's pretty much what he's doing now with like the suit and everything. But they yeah. recorded promos with him. And I think they they aired, they put the promos out after, like a couple years ago and they showed it. It was the same with Kalisto. So Kalisto had this whole angle, and I won't give it away too much, but it was a heel Kalisto. And mm-hmm. they recorded all these promos, did all this stuff. It was going to be with Ray, and uh, they just you know things happen, people get cut, and uh, yeah. there you go. You know, one bad promo sometimes can really really hurt you. Yeah, it's unfortunate the way that. You know, everybody has their off times, and yeah, unfortunately, absolutely. especially with companies like I, I don't want to trash anybody because you know who knows when I could get somebody on here. But WWE seems to have that habit of you know you're you're getting that spotlight, but then you know we. we you, you flop it and it's like, yeah, well, fuck him. Yeah, you really only get one chance. And if you screw it up, you I, I feel like that's it. Um, yeah. Unless you come back, you know, you kind of got to do what, you know, Cody and Drew McIntyre did. Yeah, you know? they... And people kind of forget about Drew McIntyre, man. Like, that dude, you know, give Cody... I'm all, I'm all about Cody returning to WWE. I think it's great. But Drew McIntyre yeah. is a guy that went out... He left with the worst fucking gimmick in the world. He was a nobody. He went from being somebody, then he blew his opportunity. They, th- they thought he didn't do what he needed to do. Left, got shredded, wrestled at every mm-hmm. indie, wrestled for all the companies, won all the titles, came he, back. He, I met him here in Omaha at an indie show. God, he was jacked. Yeah. So, I mean, 
I think there's always that second chance, but I think you you have to leave and come back. Like, so I, I mean, I, it would never surprise me if like he went out and did his thing and then they were like, what's, he looks like that now? Like, let's bring him back, you know? You know what, I would not be surprised if that's the way it worked out. Not, not one at all. bit. Not at all. Um, all right, so when it comes to, we kind of ran through the card. When it comes to getting the card together, what is your, do you have like a philosophy on how you're <laughs> running? Well, this being the first card I booked um, for a wrestling show, um, I just, you know, I tried, I asked the rest of the St. Louis guys, like, who do you want to face? What do you want to do? And, you know, obviously, like, if they said somebody that I was like, that person's not going to draw a dime and this isn't going to be good, then I would just say no. So I, got, I probably got three or four opponents from each person. And then, you know, there are a few people that I'm just, like, crazy about. Um, the main event was real tough with, with Davey and Kalisto because um, we had a few different people kind of in and out, got thoughts yeah. and ideas. And, you know, we talked to New Japan a lot about some stuff. And all of a sudden I knew, I knew Sam Ray's agent, but I also knew one of his best friends. So I kind of called him, we made this all work, and you know, then we got a main event. Um, Shelly is just one of my favorite wrestlers, you know what I mean? Oh. Like, I just, I love Alex Shelly, but he's also a good friend of Davey Richards. Mm. So that was a phone call, you know? And there's an agent, his name's Steve K. He used to be a um, uh, talent relations, like assistant to talent relations, talent relations or something. So he was like John Laurinaitis' assistant. Okay. Um, and him and Mojo Rowley run a uh, talent agency now for wrestlers. Right. So like anybody, pretty much anybody that's like cut from WWE or left like any kind of value, they take on their agency yeah. and they book for like indies, appearances, all kinds of stuff. Okay. So I got in touch with him um, to book, actually Diana Prazo was originally on the show. Hmm. And she had to take a, a booking in uh, AAA. Ah. So. But it, he, he he was great. He got on the phone with me. He was like, hey, man, little problem. You know, what can I do for you? He was like, Tennille Dashwood's a friend of mine. She's not even a client of mine. You want me to call her? And I was like, yes. Well, first he named another wrestler, and I was like, you know that wrestler ain't going to draw. And he was like, let me let me call Tennille. And, uh, you know, he had a lot of just a lot of great clients, but the only clients I booked through him was, was Kalisto and uh, Tennille. And then um, KLD was just very adamant about wanting to face Moose. And mm -hmm. uh, Moose kind of, you know, he responded right away because I think he wanted a match with KLD just as bad. And that's another yeah. thing I didn't really mention is like a lot of these St. Louis guys, they're so well known and they're so respected that when I reach out to these, you know, national stars, they want to wrestle. They want to be here. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. one of the first things that any wrestler like that's going to ask you is, who am I wrestling? And if it's like some, mm -hmm. you know, it's like some green boy, they're not gonna, they don't want to come in and do that. Yeah. So you know, with two, with everybody, um, it just kind of worked out. KLD wanted Moose. Uh, he chose a few other guys, but Moose was on his list, and I really wanted to see Moose, so we got that done. Um, Silas is just somebody that I've always really liked. Like I've always liked his character. I've always thought he just everything about him, like his whole. He, he's a great wrestler. And I just thought he would be a, a great opponent for Dan the Dad. Um, and then Josh is just one of the greatest wrestlers around. And, you know, he's somebody that I see on a regular basis. I see him about every couple months. So I knew that he would be somebody that I could connect with and contact with. And, uh, yeah, man, it, it just kind of happened. And here we are with this amazing card um, and this amazing venue for this first show. That's awesome. Amazing card for... The first show. Um, as far as people being able to watch, is there a way, hmm. in, like, if they're not able to be there in person, that they're going to be able to watch? Do you have? Any yeah. So I didn't do a live stream because I, I just wanted to. I don't know. I don't know enough about live stream yet to really get it down. Yeah. I, I didn't want to do a live stream to where it would be a bad stream or wouldn't go right. So I said, oh, you know yeah. what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do a professional recording of this. Like we're gonna bring in a really good company 
Um, I have a lot of friends in the industry just because I've been in the, I've been in the entertainment industry for so long. Yeah. And let's let's edit this. Let's really go through and let's make this the best possible product it could be because when we do the second one and the third one, I want there to be like some trust. And a lot of these yeah. you know live stream companies like Fight, they want to see something before they ever get involved with it. Oh, I can um, imagine. So I'm I'm gonna bring in a company. We're gonna we're gonna record it. And then we're gonna take some time and edit it. So probably, sorry, just eight. Um, probably two to three weeks uh, after the show will be available on YouTube for free. Okay, I'll definitely be keeping an eye out on it because, like I've said, that card is just me. <laughs> like, well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I know I'm especially like I'm a huge uh, Josh Alexander fan, so very much looking forward to seeing how that one turns out and I mean everything from that triple threat match the way you mentioned about the doing it the way ECW did with mm -hmm. the eliminations I prefer them that way it, I don't know I, I think those that way is a lot better and then I mean that that main event holy moly yeah, you know, I always, I, I, I think people forgot. I think people kind of forgot how good Sam Ray Del Sol is. Mm -hmm. Maybe they haven't seen him in a minute. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But when they see that match and that match gets around, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, he's amazing. Like he's one of the best luchadors slash wrestlers out there. So I'm, I'm, I'm as excited for that as you are. Believe me. Oh yeah, no. People are going to remember really quick when that match gets around. <laughs> For sure. All right. So one thing to kind of finish off a little bit, I like to, you might've seen something similar on, I know I've seen it on Broken Skull Sessions where he does that little bit of a speed round. I kind of like to do that. Sure. I kind of like to kind of theme it to my guests a little bit. So I'm going to name off some people first couple or some that are on the card and a couple that I was just curious to hear what you said about them. First off, Moose. Um, strong, uh, lethal, uh, intimidating, uh, powerful. <laughs> all those things. Yeah. All, all the things that... I know all the NFL things. NFL football player. Oh, yep. Yeah. You know, yeah. can't take that away from him. Um, all right. Next one, one that we've talked about quite a bit. Davey Richards. Um, a student of the game. A teacher. A technical wizard. I would have to agree. He definitely has a good mind for all of it. That's for sure. All right, next off, guy that I mentioned is one of my personal favorites out of New Japan, recently faced off against Jonah, Tomohiro Ishii. Um, I would say a very intimidating presence. Somebody mm. you don't want to see in a dark alley. I would have to agree. One thing I know I've described him with is, especially when he has a one of the titles he when he has that with him he has this look that it's like you're gonna have to damn near kill him to take it from him and yeah i'm really looking forward to having kingston that's gonna be a hell of a brawl oh, that is gonna be an amazing one and with that uh forbidden door show that they're gonna be having in chicago at towards the end yeah. of june you know he's going to be on there somewhere. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. One, that's, that match alone itself. I'm, I'm such a Tomohiro Hishi guy. That's going to be a huge event. Totally. I, I have a possibility I might be going. So, crossing my yeah, fingers. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, I'm still, it's still up in the air for me, but we'll see. I still do a lot of concerts. Yeah, stuff, I got so I still do a lot of production for concerts. So my schedule okay. gets kind of crazy in the summertime, but we'll see. Oh, no, I can imagine. All right, last but not least, 
I'm, as a fan, not too thrilled about um, how this faction kicked out two of my other favorites, the Gorillas of Destiny, but the Bullet Club. Now, which, which Bullet Club are we talking about? <laughs> um, well, why not? We'll just go with the, the all current. Of, all of, okay. Well, best logo in wrestling. That, yep, I would I have mean, to agree. Best marketing in wrestling. Cool, coolest brand in wrestling. Um, I don't know if it is what it was three or four years ago when it yeah. was the Young Bucks and everybody. But, yeah. I mean, just... I mean, there was a time, you know, I worked for StarCast with Conrad. Mm. And I remember just like, just everyone had Bull Club shirts on. Every single person had, a, had some yeah. form of Bull Club shirt. Whether it was a Marty Scroll shirt, a Young Buck shirt, or a Cody shirt, like a Kenny Omega shirt. Like everybody had, you think about the Bull Club, you think about everybody that's been in it. Mm -hmm. It's like 50 people. It's crazy. But yeah. yeah. No. I'm. Uh... I know I have a couple different versions of the uh, the Gorillas of Destiny shirts. They're mm -hmm. Bullet Club one. Which I guess now with the way that turned out for them there, I might have to get into getting uh, one of their other shirts. <laughs> no, they're one of my favorites, man. I, I, I really I really thought about having them on the show, for sure. Oh, man. I... Oh. But that would be one that I would want to see, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Between out of New Japan guys, between Tomo here Ishii and them, it's like if a if a promotion within like a couple hours of me is gonna have them on the show, I'm like, oh, I want to go. Yeah. No. I mean, I went to the first All In show, and mm. it was it was special. You know, where you saw Okada versus you know, Omega. I don't know what was it, was it Okada and Omega? Is that right? I'm wanting to say so. Yeah, that's then right. They also had the uh, Cody in that NWA title match, right? Or is it Okada and Scroll? Why yeah, didn't it no, Okada and Marty Scroll? It, it, I think it, it was. I'm, I'm I think it was Marty Scroll and Okada. And I think Omega fought Pentagon. That you know what? That might have been it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, think I'm right. Because Jericho came out as Pentagon. I remember. And it. I remember that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I remember uh, Omega having the promo where he's like talking about oh, oh that's like hardcore lucha guy or some. I'll tell you, that's the question though. That's I think that's what the the big thing with this AEW New Japan thing is. Who's gonna wrestle a cop? Mm. Like that's where people were like, "All right, who's gonna be the guy?" Because Omega's not gonna come back for a minute. Um, so who are you gonna have face Okada? Mm. And maybe it's Moxley. Maybe it's Brian. Mm. Uh, I would. I mean, just, there's just so many options. Like that ta that roster of talent in AEW is mm. just out of control. And you, you combine it with the roster New Japan has when you combine the the strictly Japan guys to all the New Japan strong guys it's like that combined with AEW in one big ass show that's gonna be something crazy yeah all right so we got the we got that out of the way one thing I want to make sure is where can people find you? Make sure. Sure. You can so um, that. we have a we have a podcast actually. Um, we I, took a few I months thought. off because because of uh, just putting the event together was just so much work, and um, yeah. we created a podcast because of the because of the um, the COVID because of the pandemic. Um, we wanted to kind of keep our brand alive and see what yeah. was going to happen. And we've had some great guests on Scott Steiner, Dan Housen, Josh Alexander. Mm. Um, the Scott Steiner one's really good. Uh, it's a video People podcast. I it's on mind YouTube. It's, on. <laughs> what's that? People I wouldn't mind having on. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's uh, it's on YouTube. It's under Grandel Wrestling on YouTube. If you go to Grandel Wrestling, uh, our Grandel Wrestling podcast, 
um, is what it's called. It's on YouTube, Spotify, all that stuff. But the video podcast is on YouTube. Um, okay. uh, Twitter is a little different. Twitter is Grando Russell instead of wrestling. It's Russell. Um, mm-hmm. And then Facebook, Instagram is Grando Russell. All right. And as far as all of that, I will be providing links in the description. I'll try to remember to get them in both the video and podcast versions. Um, one thing, me personally, I promised some guys that I would mention this in the show. You might have heard of, uh, was big on like Lucha Underground, uh, Lil Cholo. Out of I don't remember Lil Cholo, but I love Lucha Underground. He, he was on there and he's big like i remember hearing all sorts of stuff about him when i was actually stationed in san diego he unfortunately has recently lost his father and they're setting up a gofundme to help with medical and some funeral costs so i wanted anybody to know on both the podcast and youtube versions i will also be providing a link so we can hopefully help alleviate a little bit of that that's awesome man that's really good of you yeah because they some of his good friends one of them a really good friend of mine who i actually recently had on his name is socal crazy had posted on instagram about it i'm like you know what i'm all about giving back to independent wrestling especially but pro wrestling in general and if this is a way i can do it all about it very cool man very cool so well, yeah definitely uh share that link with me and we'll share it as well definitely definitely will and i'll, yeah. I'll let you know about that for sure all right well i want to uh, say thank you to my guest here for taking the time out to talk to me about this amazing show he's got coming up i will like i said be providing all the links in the descriptions and Best of luck. I look forward to seeing the video when it comes out. Thank you, partner. I appreciate you having me on. It was a good time. It was nice talking to you. Nice talking to you too, man. Take care, brother.